Welcome to Government Contracting Weekly, sponsored by AOC Key Solutions Incorporated. Government Contracting Weekly is the only television program devoted exclusively to the competitive and dynamic world of government contracting. A world where coming in second place is not an option, but where principled-centered winning is the only approach. Good morning. I'm Hilary Fordwich and welcome back to Government Contracting Weekly where we hope to give you, the government contracting community, tactics and strategies to help you win and retain government contracts. Recently, we attended the Fairfax County Chamber of Commerce GovCon Symposium, where area contractors gathered to discuss critical issues facing our local and national economy as a result of the looming budget cuts. In today's program, we're joined by Mary Beth Wooten, president of Berico Technologies, who will share of all of our viewers, and particularly those small business owners among you, who are looking for opportunities to be found amongst the pitfalls. After Mary Beth, you'll meet an old friend and colleague of mine, Greg Baroni, Chairman and CEO of Attain. Under Greg's leadership, Attain offers additional evidence that companies can grow and thrive even during these challenging times. Finally, we'll be joined by Greg McCarthy and Dan Marsh, two of my colleagues from AOC Key Solutions, who attended the conference and promised to bring us some actionable items they've taken away from the speakers. There's a lot to cover, so let's get right to it. This morning, I'm joined by Mary Beth Wooten, the President and CEO of Berico Technologies. Good morning, Mary Beth. Good morning, Hilary. Thank you for joining me. And just recently, Mary Beth attended the Fairfax County Chamber Conference, the innovation conference we're covering this morning. And the, one of the panelists actually was the founder of Berico, but Mary Beth attended some panels, and I thought it would be interesting to hear from her what she thought were some of the great takeaways. For the audience members that weren't there, Mary Beth, you attended the Leadership Insight uh, panel. Yes. Uh, so what are some of the things that, that struck you as beneficial for our audience to hear? Well, one of the key themes this morning was on focus. Um, in this time of, of uh, budget uncertainty, uh, there was a lot of advocacy and a lot of talk around companies really focusing on what they're best at. Their core competencies. Their core competencies. Um, Greg Baroni, who was a part of that panel. With the team. Uh, with the yeah, team. Yes. joining us today too. Yeah. He, um, you know, he, he reiterated the fact that, you know, companies need to do what they're best at and really become known for that. It's a focus on your brand and your competency and um, really delivering the best of what you have to offer to the government at this time of decreasing budgets. Because there isn't the, the, the space or the time or the budget leeway to be able to try anything. You've got certainly. to narrow and focus. Certainly, and especially for small and mid-tier companies, um, which, which certainly rings true to my heart. Yes. Um, and Pierre Chow, who was a part of that panel as well, obviously a strategist in uh, the defense industry, um, you know, he noted that uh, in the 90s, when we went through a similar cycle, uh, many of the companies in this space took occasion to uh, get into commercial markets or to uh, try radically different things. So they diversified. Um, and they yeah. diversified and, uh, you know, some to a to, uh, questionable end, A detriment, I guess. Yeah, so yes. There was a lot of fallout at that sort of time because there of that. There was. Yes. There was. Um, so this isn't anything that we haven't seen before, I think, in terms of the reducing budgets. But, um, but I think that that will be uh, you know, an important point for companies to truly do and to invest in research and development and to invest in innovating in ideas that they know best. So in other words, Mary Beth is saying, don't spread yourself too thin. We're all only too aware of all the current budget cuts, but in this economic environment, it's important to consider what's happening to technology, what's happening to innovation. No better person to ask at the moment than Mary Beth Wooten here from Berico Technologies. Thank you, Mary Beth, again. So tell us what you think is going to happen in terms of innovation with budget cuts. What's going to happen? A company is going to become ever more competitive? Is it going to be ironically good in the long run? Or what do you see as the impact of budget cuts? Well, certainly companies are becoming more competitive. We're seeing it already. Um, and at this point, the acquisition focus is on cost. Um, I think in the long run, and, and really even maybe in the short run, in the next year to three years, um, that competitive pressure will actually drive innovation. Um, you know, really for efficiencies on the economic side, or both for technology as well. For both. Yes. Um, you know, really, if you're focused on the outcome, 
um, which you know most of our government customers are, um, it, you know, it's it's about efficiencies, but it's also about um, serving the public better or serving the mission better. Um, you know, certainly for, for the customers that we work with in the defense and intelligence community, um, the threat has changed, but it hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. And so it is about doing more with less, and that will drive innovation. And, you know, as much so in uh, the way that we're doing business and the way that we're pursuing business, and certainly the adoption of new technologies. Mm -hmm. um, I think that where innovation in the government uh, 20 years ago meant uh, you know big behemoth IRAD projects and huge investments, um, really innovation will become much more iterative um, and leaner and meaner. Leaner yeah. and meaner. Um, you know, certainly technology allows us to um, to prototype and pilot in a in a much more rapid way than we ever have been able to. And, um, and I think that the, the competitive forces will drive companies, uh, the companies who succeed, to innovate more and to, live, to deliver more innovative solutions to our government partners. And that's actually good. In the long run, what you're saying is a little bit of hope is we'll actually come out of this and all be better in, in the long run. It might be painful. I certainly right? hope so. Yes. I certainly hope so. In the, in, the, in the short term. Though. That's right. So Mary Beth, I think many of the uh, members of our audience this morning watching may be a small business and they may also be very interested in that regard to being a sub. Uh, and so I wanted to ask you, what has Berico done to be particularly appealing because you're a sub to many of the great primes in this region. So what is it sure. that you're doing that they select Berico? Well, I, I think it gets back to the, uh, the theme at the conference this morning, which is about focus. Um, you know, as a small business, it's essential to be exceptionally good at one or just a few things and really be known for that. So you can um, differentiate yourself. So you can differentiate yourself um, and, and really be known for what you're good at, filling a niche on a team. Um, of course, many of the procurements in government today are much too large and too complex for a small business our size to uh, pursue as a prime contractor. And so, you know, we're invited to teams usually because we fill a data analytics niche, um, we focus on uh, cloud technologies, and, uh, you know, the, the differentiation that we have, thankfully, is uh, quite relevant in today's technology market. Uh, the second thing I would add is, is really just being a good partner. Um, and that has to do with, um, you know, integrity certainly, but also uh, building trust in the business relationships that you have. Um, it doesn't hurt that I spent a long time of my, in my career also working for large companies before right. I came to Barrico. Um, so I certainly understand both sides of the equation. Um, you know, large primes have business objectives and metrics and targets that are usually quite different from a small or privately held company. Um, be a good partner in regards to uh, their own, their success factors and what they're looking to deliver in terms so of the program and the customer. Communicate in their language. You, yeah. you know, the big companies you mentioned, you were IBM and PwC, so you have to think like them mm -hmm. so you can communicate like them. That's yes. right. And certainly your reputation precedes you. So it's all about you know, delivering great work and exceptional people um, and really fulfilling the commitments that you make on a contract with a large business product. And then you get a reputation too. In this region, people will know Berico can deliver. That's right. And, this that, is that, a, and that will serve you well. This is a very small town. It is, yeah. <laughs> marketplace pressures in terms of efficiencies and downward pressure in terms of earnings and fees. Many companies are consolidating. There's been speculation that this is going to be the year of mergers and acquisitions. So in terms of M&A activity, what do you see, Mary Beth? What do you hear out of the conference and what's your vision and view in terms of the amount of M&A activity we'll see this year? Well, the, there was some interesting discussion on that at the conference this morning. Um, you know, last year, if last year was the year for private equity uh, or venture capital investments in the federal space, um, I, I think that many believe that may slow down um, because of the market climate mm -hmm. here. Um, but certainly, uh, the, uh, the budget environment will force consolidation and efficiencies. And for some of the large strategic investors, um, some of the large companies looking to do M&A who have historically grown through uh, inorganic growth, um, that will continue. Um, and really, you know, I think the theme seems to be that the large companies are looking to acquire uh, capabilities or technology uh, assets or skill sets that they don't themselves have. Inherently. Like sort of niches of, of, of expertise niches. they want. That's yes. right. 
Yes, and you know, with, with the advent of IDIQs over the last decade or so, um, most of the large companies already have the prime vehicle access mm -hmm. that they need. So, um, it's you an know, and it, by definition, is indefinite, so it's going to go on anyway during this whole period. Yeah, but by definition, they've got access to most of the customer agencies where they work today. Um, but it's about having the depth of technical competency and the technical capabilities um, that may be difficult or, uh, you know, take too long to uh, to develop internally. To innovate completely from scratch. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I, I would look to see more of that. Certainly in my space as a small business uh, focused on data analytics, um, there have been a number of acquisitions in the past 12 to 18 months. Um, and we do watch that because it changes the competitive landscape for us pretty significantly. Right, yes. Well, I appreciate you coming this morning. I think our audience will have done because you gave actually some rather unique insights. Some, some actually some twists we haven't heard before. So maybe thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for, for leaving the me. conference too. Yeah. After joining Berico Technologies, Mary Beth spent a number of years at Price Waterhouse, and that consulting discipline clearly serves her well with her hands-on leadership approach at Berico. The same can be said for our next guest, Greg Peroni, as you'll see from our recent conversation. I'm delighted to have with me uh, Greg Baroni, the Chairman and CEO of Attain. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Thank you for being here. And Greg has a unique position actually at Attain because Attain has an elected CEO and an elected chairman that he is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that's very special. Maybe share with our audience a little bit about that, Greg, what that means in terms of you're one of the owners, but they've elected you to lead. Yes. Uh, the way it works is uh, similar to a partnership in a large uh, public accountancy or public consultancy. Um, in which uh, the members or the partners uh, vote who they want to have as their CEO and that CEO is and the same is true also with uh, the chairmanship. The chairman is in that case, the, in this case the chairman is actually elected from the board of managers um, and then you're given a term and you run through your term and then uh, hopefully you get reelected. If not, uh, we transfer leadership to the next generation of leaders. So that makes it that you're far more than a, a, a sort of a dictator and a leader. You have the faith of your entire team. They obviously yeah. believe you're going to lead Attain to sort of greater heights. D yes. You have to have the vote the vote of uh, and support of your team. And you're one of the founders. I founding am one of owners. the founders. So yeah. And greatest shareholder also? I'm one of the largest shareholders, or unit holders, uh, mm -hmm. in, in the company today. So what I think is significant is from that leadership perspective, Greg was asked to speak at the Fairfax Chamber uh, conference and tell us some of the highlights of what, what you shared with the audience for those members of our audience today that, that weren't able to attend. Well, I think what, what we're really sharing with everybody there is economic cycles aren't new. Um, and yes, we're in a period of austerity. Uh, or the government is going through that right now. And most of the companies that were in attendance today are government contractors. So their, their primary interest is what, how, to, how to treat this environment, what should they be doing. Um, and we were a panel of company CEOs and leaders uh, with one analyst on the panel with us. And I think everybody pretty much had, pretty much had the same message, which was cycles aren't new. They are similar to what's happened in the past. And the key to to success here is your ability to navigate. It's the pattern recognition skills and then kind of learning the principles of what enduring and prospering companies do over a long period of time and adapting them to this uh, particular environment. So uh, survival of the fittest. You've got to be fit. You've got to be financially fit and process fit. Yeah, you and 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 some of these principles are long standing. I mean, they're not really all that new. It's mm -hmm. it comes down to some fundamentals uh, around your people, uh, making sure that you're you, you put them first and foremost, particularly those that are services companies, and everything from recognition programs to compensation to professional development, it's making sure that they feel front and center in the, in the organization. And so there are leaders who have been through it before and Greg is obviously one of those ones that succeeded and continues to succeed. So Greg, obviously you're taking some of the best skills you've developed over the years, your years at KPMG, your, your previous experiences to attain. What do you think that you're doing that is unique and is positioning attain uh, the very best? I, I think 
the, the real focus for us is, is around what we call a core ideology. Mm -hmm. It's making sure that we're clear about mission, we're clear about our core values, which really we use to differentiate ourselves. We call it the attain way. Um, and it's everything from inventing the future and making sure that we create a sense of hope uh, for both our clients and for our people, and then make sure that you couple that with this be bold philosophy, which is an unwavering commitment to make sure you pursue this to the ends. Okay. It, and it requires both perseverance and resilience to get it done. So when you say be bold, how do you actually uh, personify that or uh, characterize that with your people? Do you recognize it? Is it in their reviews? How do you work it's that? It's a combination of both. Uh, it, included in their performance reviews and then we also put a recognition program around it which financial uh, and renew it's a, renumeration. It's a, we call it a, it's our quarterly achievement program mm -hmm. and we, what we do is we recognize those that put these core values in action during the course of of the way they either interacted with their clients or they serve each other so it can be soft skills in terms of interaction as well sure. as dollar and, and, and contracts as well. Correct. Because both matter. That's, that's right. Yes. Um, yeah. One comes with the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of inextricably linked, I yes. think. Yes. And what about your people? How many people do you have? How many employees? We have a uh, little over 250 uh, employees. And then you kind of couple that with um, what we call 1099 employees. The consultants. Um, and then the that kind of takes you another 50 or so in addition to that. Mm -hmm. So. We are, you know, we're growing, uh, which is a, a great place to be right now. And when you talked about earlier, we were mentioning about an economic downturn. You're growing. You're bringing, obviously, best practices so you can grow. Do you see this as a tremendously unique downturn? Do you think it's going to be something very drastic that's different? Or do you think we're going to pull out of this and everyone will just be leaner, meaner, and more efficient, efficient and effective afterwards? So I would say this, to kind of, kind of a combination. I think it's a period of austerity. And you've got to couple that, though, with a new technological climate. I mean, we've got Web 1.0 and 2.0 that we're still manifesting the waves of those, both of those uh, cycles at this point. So the technological platform is very different in which this period of austerity is occurring, mm -hmm. which I think, frankly, gives many more opportunities than probably existed nearly two decades ago when the last major one hit the defense industry. Right. What do you see? I mean, and this is a prediction I hope you don't mind making for our audience. I just know you're very wise. Oh. I've known Greg for many, many years for the 80s and KPMG. What do you see, Greg, for the rest of this year? Well, I think, I mean, I think that we're going to have some sort of difficult economic climate, uh, whether it's in the form of uh, sequestration, which we hear about a lot right now, or the budget uh, cutbacks. I think it, we're going to see some form of limited available funding by this particular client base, uh, meaning the government contracting client base. And, but that doesn't mean that it should be a, a time of woe. I mean, these are natural headwinds that occur for most businesses. And so- And it's cyclical. We've been through it many, many times. Yeah. And so really, I think you got to look at times of distress and distraction and difficulty and say, hey, there's got to be opportunity in this. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, the I, little boy that's looking for the pony in the room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I always look at this is where I think you draw upon the skills of uh, the art of, of possibilities, mm -hmm. um, where you're looking for the genius of what can come about during this particular time frame. And um, I, I'm frankly one of those that are very optimistic, and I think those that stay committed to this particular marketplace are going to reap the benefits and harvest the, the opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so the government and do the right thing in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a tremendous opportunity for the government. Uh, people are always asking me, well, you know, this is a period in which it's so lean right now. The government's gonna, not going to have an opportunity to fund innovative efforts. And I think, no way. Actually, they will be funding innovative efforts. What they're going to say, and we hear a lot about this right now with LPTA, which is low price, price technically acceptable, acceptable right? The problem is, is, is everybody's so focused in on LP, nobody's focused in on the TA, yeah. which is how do you navigate through this technically acceptable environment? And what is it? What and exactly? what is it, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, I think what the government's saying is, look, we got, we got limited funds available. We want to do new things. Be creative. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a new business model. Find a way to be technically acceptable in a different way than you were previously. Don't just give us the normal O&M stuff. 
let's try something creative. So it really is, is an opportunity to shine, to bring I, something new to the table for the government. I mean, yes. for companies that are smaller, wanting to grow. Nimble. This is, and nimble mm -hmm. with some, some set of agility skills. I think this is a great opportunity for them. That is great to hear. So despite a lot of doom and gloom that we hear in this region, there is a lot of optimism. You don't hear CEOs saying, I think this year my plan is to shrink. And certainly successful CEOs like Greg have other plans. They have plans for growth this year. So what I'd like to ask you now, Greg, is you have plans for growth. What are your keys to winning that you focus on? Um, the show is sponsored by Key Solutions that provides strategy capture and proposal services. So we're always interested in asking, what are your keys to winning? What are you doing at Attain? So, so let me kind of break this into two elements here. One is the long view, which is a built to last philosophy that, that builds on a core ideology that says, here's our mission in life, here are our core values, in other words, how we will behave and get those, those, that purpose accomplished. Um, and then at the same time, it's this relentless drive toward progress around innovation, around improvement, around change and renewal, and putting programs in place that in one sense preserve that culture of intention, meaning that ideology that you have, at the same time programs that really move you forward, move your people forward, and you invest in this what I call organic capability in terms of your people, in terms of the things that you do, everything ranging from sales and business development and capture and proposal development like you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, all the way through to the people development in terms of tangible skills that they have and then softer skills in the form of leadership capability. So it's putting that long view in place. And then you couple that with this focus on in, in what I really think is an important thing around your competency. What is it that your sets you apart? Your core yes. competency what sets you apart from everybody else. Your big differentiators. Yes. Yeah. And, and making sure that you invest in that and develop it even further. Um, and then there are tactical considerations. The, mm -hmm. the shorter term view is what markets, what fast moving streams should I capitalize on? But what? Aligned with your core competencies, right? And yeah. the markets that you already have intimate relationships with. So it's all of that combined that you kind of uh, take into consideration as you drive towards success for the long term. Well, I know that we are, there are many attendees that found that your presentation at that conference, you, you made a lot of those insights and delivered those. Them, yes. Yeah, and they, uh, I think they resonate in this marketplace. So thank you for joining us this morning. Oh, you are. We recently covered the Fairfax County Chamber of Commerce GovCon Symposium 2013. And in attendance was the Executive Vice President from Key Solutions, Greg McCarthy. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. And also Dan Marsh, uh, the Vice President of Business Development at Key Solutions. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. They both attended, and they have some key takeaways uh, for us, for those of you that didn't attend. Greg, over to you first. What were some of the key takeaways that you took from the conference? See, I think a key one, Hillary, was the breakout that I attended on lessons learned. And uh, it seemed to be a consensus that this time frame reminds a lot of government contractors of late 80s, early 90s, where a lot of technology really came out of those times. And what I'm recommending, what I saw was, hey, this is the time to look at your investment in IRAD, R&D expenditures. Internal re research and development. Yep. Yeah. Take a look at that, what you're spending. And now's the time to not really con contract so much as to look into that. That was a function once performed by the government. They used to have pay contractors to do that. But if contractors do that on their own, I think they're going to find out that they're going to differentiate themselves from their competition. Great. So you're saying don't retreat, invest. And that's what you're advising some of the key solutions clients. Right now is the time to do it. Yes, Great. Good advice. And, and Dan, what were your key takeaways? I attended the uh, compliance breakout session. And um, my key takeaway, there are a couple of key takeaways. One was there's been an increase in litigation um, over the last few years, especially whistleblower related litigation has been up 50% since 2009. So the panel was recommending that um, you, you make sure and you put in place in your organization uh, processes to deal with potential whistleblowers. Gerard Mean, the deputy assistant US attorney, had said that everyone who walks in his door says, well, I, I tried to tell the company and no one listened. So the takeaway is, Make sure you have a process in place, people who will listen to whistleblowers, and that will reduce lit litigation for you. 
Um, the second takeaway was DCAA audits are years behind. Uh, there's one company that's still being audited for 2005. My goodness, wow. Right? So half the people have left, they don't have the records they need. So you make sure you put processes in place. Um, you, know, you take action to have easily accessible records for the things that were going on back then. Years in ago. The programs. Because you, you may have no, be ready. no other way of getting the information. Your people may have gone. Yes. You know, so uh, yeah, that was like the main two takeaways I thought would be useful for our watchers. And so for any of your, for your clients, what will you be saying also in terms of what they should do for the rest of this year? Internal investment, make sure you have the processes, comply. Any other takeaways that you would be thinking of advising everyone about? Yeah, you change the paradigm a little bit. Um, the government used to be in charge of oversight of these programs, right? Mm -hmm. Now, to me, it seems, it seems like there's a shift to the government folks being asked to develop technologies and be accountable for solutions. So where, where industry once did that, now it's the government that's responsible. So there's a key shift. And as a contractor, what you really need to do is focus on what is the problem? What, what is it that the government needs and, and develop your solution from that? Oh, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. Dan, any final thoughts for our viewers? So the other, the other one that I think would be useful was um, obviously everyone's moving towards cloud. Uh, you know, uh, and, the, and the government, there's an increased focus on reducing cost. Um, so the Amazon came in and did a great uh, presentation of their, what seems quite mature and secure solution uh, for cloud services. But it seems like there's a few different options out there. I'd say, you know, you've got to reduce costs. Any, any integration or new solutions you're coming up with, make sure you look at cloud options because they really do offer flexibility and it's where the, you know, the, the end customer wants to go. It's where the future is too. Yeah. And it's becoming ever more secure because that used to be a big concern about the cloud. Right. It's no longer. I think Thank you very much. So for members Absolutely. of the audience, if you couldn't attend, at least you have some great feedback and takeaways uh, from both Greg and Dan this morning. Thank you for joining us. It's inspiring listening to Greg and seeing his level of optimism even in the face of all the uncertainty we face as a result of the budget crisis. In particular, I was struck by Greg's description of what he refers to as the Attain Way, their management approach to driving outstanding performance. We hope the ideas shared with us today by Mary Beth and Greg, as well as the action steps outlined by Greg McCarthy and Dan Marsh, inspire you and recognize that we can each flourish during these economically challenging times. You've been watching Government Contracting Weekly, sponsored each week by AOC Key Solutions Incorporated. Government Contracting Weekly is the only television program devoted exclusively to the competitive and dynamic world of government contracting. For additional information, comments, questions, or suggestions, please write us at governmentcontractingweekly.com.